Welcome back to the third and final installment of the virtual escape rooms, et cetera, et cetera, STI. Um, hope everyone's doing well. Um, when we left off last time, we were talking about doing Google Forms as the escape room. And we're gonna review that. We'll let you guys show us some of the things you've created. We, we know that there were some limitations on those in terms of things like uh, data verification, meaning when Google, like when the system automatically knows whether it's the right or wrong answer, that really only works for multiple choice. And it works best with numbers because you can make it be exact with the number. It's harder to do things like uh, uploading pictures. You could do things like that. That just then adds an element of sort of human interaction, meaning if you want people to, if you want people to, uh, let me just um, meet everyone. Um, if you want it to be automated, meaning the system kind of tells people if they got the right or wrong answer, that really works best with either multiple choice, number based for verification, or you have to make it a quiz because then you could kind of set right and wrong answers. If you want somebody to turn something in where you say, hey, make the object, take a picture of it, upload it. Well, that can't be an automated quiz. There's no right or wrong answer for something that somebody uploads. You would have to manually check that and see that at the end. So it's a sort of a, a, a you have to kind of be creative about how you're gonna use these types of things. And so there was also the other option, Chris, of like making um, like a Google slide presentation and having like almost like buttons at the bottom, like we did the choose your own adventures. Like for younger kids, um, you could have done like a true false, right? And you choose true and it leads you to one slide and false could lead you to a different slide, right? Like maybe true just advances you and false. <laughs> Um, you know, is no, the correct answer is, or, you know, something like that. So there, so there were other options, um, certainly in other ways to do it, because just as, as Chris is saying, you know, um, maybe the, the form, the Google form was too limiting for what it is you're trying to do. Right. And what we'll do is we'll do a quick, just recap of some of those just technical functions as to like where those things are and um, where those buttons are. And let me just share. So in terms of like creating. So in a Google form, if you have, let's say a short answer question and you wanna have that validation on there, meaning where you make it be, an exact answer, you can go to those three dots and you do response validation. And what that does is let's say it's a number, five plus two equals, you have to make it exactly the number. So that's kind of an easy way. And that's, that's a, what Vivian did with her second form, her second lock on her escape room was she basically gave them a numerical code to unlock the quiz or unlock the form. You don't have to do numerical ones with response validation. You can choose text, you know, length of something. It gets a little bit trickier. What you can though do too, or also is you can turn the form or turn the, the series of questions into a quiz by going up to the gear and making it a quiz. So when you make it a quiz, that'll allow you to select correct answers, where you can assign correct answers. So that, that gives a little bit of that automation to knowing whether they got all the questions right or wrong. So then you can assign point values if you wanted to, but you could kind of play around with how best you want this in terms of, do you want it to be all numerical based if you're working you know, as, a, as a math escape room where it's all just about numbers, or if you're gonna do things like maybe add if it's foreign language, let's say, the way you might structure it is you might put up a picture of something and then have that foreign language word for it. 
and then they have to choose the correct one. You know, they're all mistakes. Like this would say, you know, banana. And then this would be apple. So it would be, you know, choose the right one. That would be where you would make it into a quiz where each question has a correct answer. And then that's how you can kind of automate the process. Otherwise, it'll be a little bit manual in terms of you would have to review the results under responses in order to see if who got the questions right, who got them wrong, who gets the new code. Yeah, there's usually like a way, like if, you know, if you really want to use a form, there's, you know, always a way to kind of figure it out. You just have to play with it a little bit and think about, you know, obviously what your goal is, right? So vocabulary, that might be a good time to use a form, like just as Chris was showing you, whereas, you know, for something else, you just may need a different vehicle for what you're trying to do. Right. And because they're not always going to work um, for every content area, for every unit, for every lesson. It's one of those things where it's like, this is a tool, this is an option. You have to be thoughtful about your own class, your own content area, like your own kids and figure out where it would best fit for you. Um, another quick thing, just as a reminder, when you're doing the form, if you want to have it, save all these things in a spreadsheet, all you have to do is in that response tab before you like send it out, just click the create spreadsheet button. And then whenever the kids respond, you'll actually have a spreadsheet um, of all the responses. So that's a handy little uh, thing to have. In addition, if you don't necessarily want them to see, you know, all the questions right away, you would right here, these two lines, you can add sections. And after you add sections, you know, you can say after section one, continue to a different section, section one, section two. That's also where you could do like the validation based on an answer. If they get it right, it goes to the next section. If they get it wrong, it goes to a thing that says, a, a section that just says, try again. You could have a section literally just called, you know, wrong. And then what would happen is if they got the, the answer, if it was a validated answer, you could have them go to like that, section three or section two, which is wrong, try again. So you can play around with some of those customizations. As Vivian mentioned in the choose your own adventure, when you're doing these things and you wanna have, you know, two different buttons, like let's say, you know, it's like yes and no. When you click on those objects, as you're building your presentation, all you have to do is insert a link and then you could link it to a different slide. And then obviously there's only one slide here, but you can then link it to other slides in the presentation. So if I came over to this longer form document that we've been working on, like if I wanted to click on this and let's just say, I'm gonna make this whole box a link. When I go to make this link, it's gonna allow me, it's down here. It's gonna allow me to do, whoops. I got rid of it. Hold on a second. Yeah, let me actually just come to a, a more blank section. So if this is that object and I want to insert the link, I can go to different places. I can do next slide, previous slide. That way it's like, you know, if you want to go to the next one, if, if the answer is yes, go to the next slide. Or if the answer is no, you bring it to slide number seven, let's say. So that's how you can make those links to go either forward or jump around if you're making it more of a um, Google slide based uh, virtual class or um, escape room. And for younger kids, that might just be easier if you're, you know, if you're dealing with very young children. Right. And again, it's all about your content area, your kids, the unit, the lesson, like you have to sort of play around with these and then figure out where they would fit best for you. Because some people might be, oh, this is gonna be awesome. I could do one of these for every single unit that I do. Cool. Other people might only use this once a year because it maybe only works in that one spot. Cool. So why don't we do this? Who wants to uh, share one that they are one of the, the escape room that they worked on? I'll Only share. For... All right, go ahead, Allison. Okay. 
And then Marina, I saw you, you can go after. Um, let me just pull up the folder and then I'll share my screen. Um, okay. Wait, what is the class? It's 5602. I don't even remember <laughs> the class number. Okay. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, so I just really did it to, um, I don't have really all the bells and whistles. I just wanted to see if it would work. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. My escape room. And then I, I did a choose your own adventure um, revolving around science. We have brand new science curriculum this year. So I just played around with that, but I made an answer key for my escape room. I only did two puzzles because again, I was really trying to just make sure it actually worked. And I tried it, it seemed like it it, it worked. Um, and then those are my puzzles over there. And basically I took Vivian's kind of rules or guidelines and I just took some out and put it in. I didn't pick great pictures, but we could see. The pictures are easy. You know, the pictures are, they're not sort of- Well, it took me forever to find ones that I really liked. And I was like, I'm spending way too much time looking at pictures. Why is it being so slow? Okay. So I just, you know, kind of shortened it a little bit because I only did, I ended up only doing two puzzles, I think. Um, so then basically they have to click the spider. I forget which one it was. Okay. so. Obviously they have to put in the, I hope I did this right. So if I put in a wrong answer, let's fingers crossed. See, how do I change it? So it doesn't give the answer. That's what I couldn't figure out. You customize you know the I'm message. Saying? Yeah, the error message on it. Um, how do I, I mean, obviously yeah. the answer is 30, but I couldn't figure out how to change it. So if they put the wrong answer, the the correct one wouldn't appear. Does that make so sense? So when you do it, when you're yes. making that response validation and you yes. put 30, to the right of it, it says custom error text, I think is what it says. Yeah, okay, custom let me, error hold on. text. Let me stop my screen share. I want to find that little button because it took me. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's in the same, it's on the same row. I was like going, losing my mind, trying to find it. Okay, let me see. Here I am. So where is it? So click on short answer text. Right here? Yep. Okay. And you see equal to 30, see to the right of 30, it says custom error. Uh, okay. I was wondering what that was and couldn't figure out. So what would I, you could I would just write try again or something like yeah. that? Wrong. Okay. Wrong. 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 Okay. <laughs> All right. So now I get that. So now I understand, because before I was like, so I would just put try again. Okay. Yeah. All right. That was very helpful. So I would have to do that on my second puzzle, but. Yep. All right. And what's nice about that error text too, is like you could, if it's a harder question, that error text could almost be a hint. You right. Know, if you wanted to say, remember back to our lesson on whatever we did that, you know, you can't put a ton of word writing in there. I'm not sure what the character limit is, but it's, it's short, but you can, oh, it, can what you, it can be wrong, try again, or you can, there's enough, it's like a hundred characters or something. So you can give like a brief little hint if you wanted to. Okay. And then it gave them the code to go yep. to the next one. So that was really my only question. I'd have to fix it on my um, second puzzle is put try again or whatever I, choose to put there but basically i mean i enjoyed kind of like playing around with it a little bit i mean it doesn't have all the bells and whistles as you clearly can see um but then puzzle two i would have to enter the code and i wrote the don't use commas because i did you mention that last time yep yeah so i forgot that and when i was playing around with it it wouldn't work out but so I did that again, not a lot of bells and whistles. And then I made a choose your own adventure. Um, the science was kind of hard, but I wanted to do something that 
because our science is brand new this year, these four units. It's taking forever to load. But it's basically about a seagull dropping a clam. And this idea of, you know, what happens if it if you click the soft ground or the hard ground. Um, there's not that many slides in here, but it's not really like a kind of right or wrong. It's think about your choice again kind of thing with your choose your own adventure. Um, so hard ground, hard ground breaks the clam, but not enough. The seagull's going to try to fly higher. So let's see, is, does the clam break or it doesn't break? Doesn't break. Then the last thing was think about the choice you made, discuss with your partner about motion, energy, and collision. So I kind of like that idea with choose your own adventure because there wasn't necessarily a right or a wrong. There was a better choice in the two. But I tried to make it. Um, and then he ate his lunch. Yay. If they click the right one. No, awesome. um, so I just kind of played. That's around. great. And it'll get kids talking, right? Like, right. Well, this is the first lesson of unit one, and it starts with a crow and a walnut and trying to break the walnut. Um, but I didn't love like the idea the, the unit gave. So I thought maybe this would be interesting for them to start off with before they actually do the um, investigation of motion energy, you know? So I kind of just played around with the, the topic. And I didn't make it a pretty background or anything, but I just wanted to, you know, get the ideas. And, the you know, this could just be a tool to get kids talking about what they know or what they right. think, they could make predictions, right? It, it's a really cool way to even just launch um, a unit. Yes, definitely. So I kind of like, this whole choose your own adventure, choose your own answer kind of thing. But yeah, so that's what I worked on. Nice. Marina, you want to throw some yours up there? OK. Can you see my Google Drive? Yeah. So I did the same. I did the uh, um, choose your own adventure that uh, I guess we could go to that first. Oops. OK, so I looked at my first unit, which is dealing with like school subjects and stuff. So I said, like, let's go on a um, trip to Mexico. Wait, where does it start? Oh, OK, you click the green button. So it has a little story and it's like, do you want to come with me? Yes, no. So if you click no, it goes to, it's like, but it's, but it's Monday, we have to go to school. So then we still go. If you click yes, it skips to another slide. It says, in my, um, and then it talks about like school um, supplies. What do you bring in your backpack? If it says mi perro, then it's like, no, they don't have dogs at school. So you have to go and get your class subjects. But if you go to mi tarea, then it goes to the right slide. Um, okay. And so it goes through all of that. There are like more of the um, slot. So it's like, oh, MPSO con la clase de, and this actually, they could choose wherever they want to go and it'll choose a different path. So if they go to math class, what do you need for math class? You need a dictionary or a calculator, you need a calculator, you know? And so it goes through all of that. I mean, I'll just like skim through all of the slides um, now. So you just click, I think I'm almost positive they all link correctly. Um, so just like school subjects and school um, class, uh, what are they called? Utensils, but things like that. And then it, towards the end, I was trying to like close it all together. So no matter what class they had, um, saying that like, it's important to learn languages do you like to practice languages? If they said yes, it would go on to this slide. There's, are you going to continue studying? So anyway, and then if they said no, then they would just go home and then rest in the patio and then or alone, and then they'll go to school again tomorrow. So that's it. <laughs> 
and that was the choose your own adventures um and then the escape room so i spent like like so much time on this it was definitely very time consuming but i think it'll be i think it'll take the students like maybe 10 minutes it took me like 10 hours but <laughs> okay so it goes through here we get the instructions the hints so the first is the entrance here so they have to under uh what is the, how many spanish-speaking countries are there and the right answer so if you click on any of these numbers they're kind of like hidden within the rocks they it won't advance to the next slide but if you click the right one which is 21 it brings you here and that's me on the floor um asking for help so then there's obviously the things around the room um that they have to click on so it's the hourglass the book here the map and the key and also the clock here on the right and the final one will open the the lock so for example if we go to the first one which i know is the hourglass next and this was all on the preliminary unit topics so it was like greetings numbers alphabet like all of those basic things so then you'd say um Buenas tardes, and you go through it. So for each of them, there's about five questions, I believe. But for example, if you got, um, if you said Buenas tardes here, that would be incorrect. So let's try again. Don't forget accented letters. Buenos dias with an accented I, and it'll go on and on. And that, so I think I, yeah, I made five puzzles. The final one unlocks and the final code is um, la clase de español es muy divertida. <laughs> That's like the final code. And then you let Miss Salzano free. And then the trick is, is because I wanted them to actually like get me out of there. So the last, so like when you click on that, that'll bring you to the last code. But then in order to unlock this, it says click on the top right corner of the escape room because there's a little hidden object up here. Well, it's just blank anyway, it's transparent and then it'll bring me out. So they won't know that until they know to click on the top right corner, I would hope. Um, That's really and, cute. And Chris, Chris, let me just ask, um, is it possible in the, um, in the uh, Google form to have like a, a word box, like for kids to, like I was just thinking, like if a kid, you know, if she wanted them to have buenas tardes, buenas noches, you know, whatever, like, is there a way for those to be there so they can like a multiple select? Like a, yeah, I mean, a multiple choice. Okay. You would have those as multiple choice if you but wanted. Not like word box i don't know what you mean by word box i mean you could have oh, like, like a word bank but okay. they're but they're choosing though it's a question though right yeah right just so that the words like if she wanted to have it be, like use these words in your in your answer kind of thing you, yeah so yes you can do that um and where you would do that in there's a couple of ways you could do that so one way is, and I'll, um, I'm going to stop your sharing for a quick second, Marina, um, and I'll show you. So if you want to do something like that, like help text, one way to do it is literally in the description of a question, which used to be called help text. And if this is our question, you know, like, uh, you know, let's see, pick the right one. Under the three dots, what you could do is you could go to description. The description, it, it originally when Google, in the old Google forums, it was called help text, which basically was like, this is what you have to do in this question. So that's a place where you could say, you know, you know, use the words, whatever. And then it's just paragraph and you can't separate them out as, um, like line items or bullets, but you can put text there. What you could also do alternately is you could add an image. So you can add an image to the question. 
So you can have an image of all the words that they may need to think about or use in some form or another. And then that way, let's just, I mean, let's just say like vocabulary. So like this, let's just say that one. So you might have this question has whatever the question is, a description, use the words, you know, from the image below. Oops. To help you answer. You know, and then they would be looking at this question. So when they would look at it, they would see this question like this. When they see the question sort of title, they see a description or an explanation of what to do during that question. And then maybe they see a list of vocabulary words, then they have to decide and they have to make that choice. So this is a question that has the question title, a description, an assisting image, right? Or, or the, the question is using the image as part of the question. And then it also has two images as possible answers. So those would be the ways where I, I would kind of work that kind of scenario in. Is that what you were looking for, Vivian? Yeah, you know, I mean, just, an, excuse me, I'm sorry, just another option, you know, because I, they, we have such a wide variety of, of subjects that people are teaching and, you know, just giving people another way or, you know, sometimes when you are working on vocabulary, you want kids to be able to identify like the right word amongst many. Yeah. No, totally. And that's one of those nice things about uh, Google Forms. It's limited in a lot of ways in terms of the types of questions and how you can validate the quizzes. But it does give you the option to add help text in the description. It gives you the option to add an image to the question. You can also add individual images to the answers. So it does give you kind of a, a multimedia component in that regard. Um, Again, it's limited in that like multiple choice is sort of your best bet when you wanna have validation on these things. You can do short answer with that response validation. Um, it just gets a little bit tricky. Um, it's a little bit harder to manage. So those are just things you have to kind of keep in mind. Chris, and I just wanna mention one more thing when it came to the um, escape room. Mm -hmm. After I was like trying out all of the clicks and everything, I realized that if they were to just try and click any object that wasn't linked, it would progress them to the next slide, like not intentionally. So what I noted is what I had to do was um, just create like a giant shape over the whole image mm -hmm. and make that so make it transparent so that if they click anywhere, it'll keep them on slide four, or whatever slide that is. So it doesn't yeah, totally. So if if not everyone understands what she's talking about, basically what that is, is you have to make, if you click anywhere in present mode, it's going to, um, you know, make you go to the next slide. But if you do this and essentially take like a shape, you know, and put it like over, let's say it's this area you can make this shape link to itself. So this is, uh, whoops, I hate it when it does this. Slides of this presentation, I'm gonna make this one linked to slide 18, which is itself. And then I could essentially put this over if I wanted to the entire slide let's say I only wanted people to click on the tabs over on the right. Then what I would do with this object, it's on top. So all I do is I just, I make it um, transparent and I do the border transparent. And then when I'm in present mode, and what I could do too is let's put a button over here. I'm just gonna put a button in the middle. And we'll just have this button we'll get to slide three, let's say, right? So then when I'm in present mode here, if I click anywhere, it's going to essentially link me back to the slide. It, it is a link, it's just, it's not, oops, I clicked off. Um, 
then when I click on this, then it takes me back to slide number three because it clicked on that one box. By making that one big sort of uh, massive shape and having it linked to itself, that will allow the person to make sure that they only stay on that one slide. So you essentially kind of build your text, then right before you're gonna make your two buttons, you cover the whole slide with a transparent shape that links to itself. And then you put your sort of two choices on top of that massive transparent shape. And then that means that no matter where they click, it's going to stay on the slide unless they click on one of the two choices. Chris, if you, if, but if she shares the link with her kids as, oh, I guess uh, published to the web, mm -hmm. you still need to make the transparency? Yeah, because when you click on a slide, it'll auto advance. Right, 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 right. Because the slides are designed like you click on, they're just going to go to the next one. That's why like you write out your text, you build your whole thing. And right before you're going to make your two buttons, just cover the slide in a giant rectangle that links to the slide itself, make it transparent with a transparent border, then put your two choices on top of that. So essentially there'll be three links, two are visible and one is kind of a transparent. Yeah, I think we did that for the, when we did the math walk, like we were, we worked on that. Yeah, I remember now. Thanks. Yep. That's just one of those little little tricks, those little hacks that um, I'm glad you brought up because sometimes you kind of forget about those things. Uh, but it's all good. Awesome. Anyone else want to? Devin, let me see what you got. Uh, thanks. And uh, tough back to follow because Marina's is really good. And um, so nice job. She also answered uh, the biggest issue I had was advancing the slides automatically. Um, so that was one of my questions. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, I noticed watching, rewatching the recording that um, I am still getting this gray box when I present, like in the middle. You see that? Uh, yeah. That's you guys. That's like that's my Zoom window. So Chris, on a separate note, sometime if you can maybe help me. Yeah, figure it's, this out something stuff, in settings it's got stuff it like aspect. that is um also generally uh you want to make sure that i know there's a zoom update available currently right. so whenever there's a zoom update it'll say like there's a zoom update available install those updates and then reboot okay. the computer because a lot of times that'll solve those problems i will give that a shot and then i'll uh, we'll see from there okay um so I went two different paths with this. Uh, the first escape room I did was uh, Google slide based just to get the hang of it. Um, a little interdisciplinary action with um, just a football theme and elementary sight words and elementary concepts in elementary classroom. Um, And I guess it's everybody's having a little issue here. So on your way to the Super Bowl, click the escape room, and then it's simple which sight word matches this picture. And if you click on the wrong one, oops, click on the helmet, come back, hat is correct, touchdown, move on. And as you can see, it advances. Um, and it's just a yeah, it's just it's a series of those until you get to the um until the end where you get, you know, you won the Super Bowl, great job. Um, and then I went back and tried the next one. Right, here we go. Um, so barring off that little dialogue thing um, that you guys shared, I uh, can't believe it, you overslept. Mine's not nearly as advanced as, um, as some of these other ones, but uh, come on. Can't believe it. You overslept. You're going to be late for school. You must hurry and complete your health. And the first, the first escape room is I, I use a cursive font so no one can read it. So I'll, I'll change that. <laughs> but uh, you must hurry up and complete your healthy habit task before you can leave for school. This is all based on our healthy habits that, um, that we teach as part of our health education. Uh, once you have completed each healthy habit, you may continue on. Don't be late. Dr. Gill, Mrs. Heffern will be really upset. Good luck. Now, again, uh, with the slide, clicking on the slide, advancing on its own, I click this little next button here, but um, so now I know to overlay a shape and then I can advance this next button here. Um, mine is, uh, you know, uh, so our first healthy habit was nutrition. What should I eat? 
there's really nothing to click on here. As you hover, the kids hover around, they'll see where that the thing comes in and that'll take them to their Google form. Um, and then broken down by nutrition and food groups. What I did was I did what uh, you talked about second was I created uh, the different uh, sections. So if, uh, which one is not one of the five food groups. So if I pick vegetables, which clearly is one of the five food groups, hit next, it'll, I, I was able to add the link that it takes me right back to that question. So it doesn't advance the question. It'll keep the question until you get the right answer. Proteins, no, nope. see when I hit next, it comes right back to it. Sweets is not one of the five food groups. It would advance me to the next section, to the next question. Um, which of the following is, is from the protein group? Brown rice, soda, chicken, All right? So, uh, so soda clearly um, is not the right answer, but chicken is in the protein group. So when you click in that, it'll go on. How many ounces of water should you drink in a day? This one I logged, I set as a number, but the parameters is a number. Eight, eight ounce of glasses is 64. So, um, and then when you submit, you got congratulations, you escaped the kitchen. Hurry to the bathroom and use this code to begin the next challenge. And 2468 was the code. Um, and again, I guess the only way to get back to the escape room is to get click back on the link. Um, I'll add the next button here, put the shape over top. But right now, if you just click on the, the, the slide, it advances automatically. Really, the only place to click here, again, is the toothbrush. So now it takes us to the next Google form. Hygiene enter code. Uh, so first thing you have to do is enter the code. I got to change these uh, subtitles. Uh, what I said was 2468. Advances you to the next question. How many times a day should you brush your teeth? A couple of silly multiple choice answers. Again, um, I set the limitation. So if you, you know, every hour on the hour is wrong. So it's not going to let you advance to the next question until you get it right. Um, until the bubble stop as fast as you can. It's a race. Clearly those are wrong answers. Um, and a bacterial. All right, submit to finish. Uh, you did it, now hurry and catch the bus. And then you get back to the escape room, click on and whatever, there was the next one. So those are just three slides with a couple Google Forms to, to get you to advance, um, basically advancing on correct answers to the forms. And that was my shtick. Awesome. Hope that worked out. <laughs> yeah, no, and that that's the very much like the right path and the right track and figuring out how it works for you and you know again like the multiple choice like the way you did it because your questions are going to be phrased a little bit differently than just like a, a you know answering a number or doing a math problem something like that so yeah you got to figure out how to tweak it and sort of hack it to work for you so and that was one of the things when i when i was selecting multiple choice versus short answer um was how do, how do i get it to advance to the next question with the wrong answer or without the, without the correct answer. Um, and that, you know, so I set it up with, you just, you know, it, uh, when you set the parameters on each one, when you, if you click the wrong one, it would just send you right back to the same section. If you click the correct one and submit it, it would send you to the next section. Right. Um, so exactly. That's and that's why sometimes it can seem a little bit weird. If it's almost like each question is its own section, which seems like a little counterintuitive. Usually, right. you know, in a normal form, you would have like, you know, let's talk about your morning. There'd be like four questions in that section. Let's talk about your afternoon. There'd be like four questions in that section. The escape room to do it like that. Yeah, you're basically doing one section per question Correct. to then allow for that. Like, if it's the right answer, go here. If it's the wrong answer, go there. You know, nicely done. Thank you, A Adam. I think okay. You up. Sure. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Screen share. <laughs> Okay, so let's, so I'll do the escape room first. So I kind of stole a little bit um, from the example. So you're the world famous archeologist, Chicago Jones. He's been caught in an Egyptian tomb and he needs the codes to unlock the different locks to get out, okay? So let's see, if we go to the next slide. And again, I stole this from you. Entry to the rooms is 23 steps away. And so hopefully if they remember when we studied Rome, we have Roman numerals, okay? Over here, if they click on the I, it gives them the little tips that they need to 
um, I use short answer questions. And I told them in the instructions that it's all lowercase, no spaces, no punctuation, et cetera. And if I go back to it, I go back to the door. So I click on 23 and it lets me into where he's trapped. And here's Chicago Jones. And I kind of put the different um, locks from units of study and they've got to go in the correct order. And so the first thing we study is ancient man. So if they click on um, the early human tool, it takes them to the Google form, I hope. Okay. And so they have to type in the answer to the early ancestor of modern humans first to walk upright and leave Africa. They lived from 1.5 to 200,000 years ago. And so if they type in homo sapiens that's wrong and it says please try again but if they type in homo erectus it takes them to the next one uh let's see this is anybody know lucy yep it's lucy very good old stone age that's paleolithic Uh, this is Neander Fall. Uh, this is, I always spelled this wrong, so hopefully I got it right this time. Les Cow. Okay, and so great job. You've unlocked the first lock. And so I have a picture of a lock. They hit submit, and it gives them the code 1974, which was when Lucy was discovered, and 1856 is when the first Neanderthal bones were discovered. Okay, and then they go back. And the next one, I believe, um, was Mesopotamia. So they would have to type in the code 1974, 1856, and it takes them to the next one. And there's an ancient Sumerian door. So they click on it, and it starts a whole series of questions again. That is so cool. They're going to love that. Uh, let me see. I what's cool too is that you teach um <clears throat> like these different sections and you know if you teach sixth seventh eighth let's say and i know you don't but like for like a high school teacher who may have different ages you could almost basically make copies once you build sort of your template of your first slideshow and your um forms you could copy each of them and then just change the links and change the questions subtly. So you're not rebuilding the entire thing from scratch, you know, or, you know, so like if you had slightly different questions, let's say you taught sixth, seventh, and eighth, you wouldn't necessarily have to reinvent the wheel for each grade. You can kind of duplicate the one you made and then just go in and just tweak the links and tweak the language and the questions inside of them. Well, that, that would be like for the end of the year, I was going to do one for each unit. So there'd be one cool. for early humans because I've got a, a, a ton of questions that I could ask. And then for my escape room, I did it a little bit differently. They're at an archaeological dig site. So somebody pick a, pick a square. It's um, ADE one to five. So it'd be like D5, like battleship. B3. B3. So if we click on B3, uh, I can't read it because everybody's in the way. Um, <laughs> but you've dug down, you found nothing. You can keep digging or you can go back. So if we hit keep digging, okay, keep digging. Okay, you found something. So pick a person. Eight. Uh, the eight, okay. All right, you found the vanity license plate. It's not an important large lot you'll find, but you can have fun, a good laugh before you discard it. And then if you click, you go back to the grid and you can pick a new spot. So if they picked, I don't know, D5, okay, keep digging, keep digging. Oh, you found something, click here to see what it is. So then you would click on one of these things. So if we click on the ancient Chinese warrior, you found an ancient Chinese bronze spear point. Um, you can go back and keep digging for something else, or you can click on this and find out more about it. And if you click on it, it takes you to a link that talks about Chinese weapons really neat that's awesome they're gonna have a lot of fun with that oh thank you yeah that's great and since you have that like i said you have that framework so now you don't necessarily need to reinvent the wheel for every the only thing i have to do then is go back and make that transparent thing so they you know they could automatically advance the slides but it's kind of silly because you know but i could go back and do that um i can't make the transparent um thing 
last. I got to do that first, right? Uh, or you would make the transparent thing like um, just before you make the buttons. Okay. Now, you you could because everything in slides is stacked in layers. Uh huh. You can move things forward and backward. So okay. if you happen to know that, like, let's say you have the two choices, right? You have your red and green arrows. If you know those are the last two things you put on there, you could then put the big transparent box over the top and then go to arrange, order, send backward, and you do it two times. Okay. What I would recommend doing is if you know that that's the case, where you're like, oh, yeah, I totally put my buttons last, put your whole box over it, make the link, but don't make it transparent, send it back, send it back, like backward, backward to make mm -hmm. sure that you basically see a gray box with like two choices. Then you're like, okay, well, yeah, I'm good. I'm not seeing any other text. Then make it transparent. Or could I, could I make a, a slide before it, make the big transparent box and just copy and paste? Sure, totally. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. That, that might be, that might be a, an easier way to do it. I, I don't know. But it's something I can play around with. Yeah, totally. I mean, and that's one of those things. And like, so what I'll just to sort of um, sort of show you what I'm referring to in um, in regards to kind of moving the things around is like, let's say, and I'll share my screen for one second. And let me do, let me just make two boxes real quick. And I'll make this box I'll make that red. And I'll make this one green. Okay. So like, if you didn't know, like if I knew like I had this and I was like, oh snap, I didn't do my transparent box yet, but I know that these two were here. I could say, all right, let me put this over this. <laughs> Excuse me. Covers everything. Before I make it transparent, you know, I can still make the link, have it linked to itself, but then I can go to arrange, order, send backward my no box pops up arrange order send backward my yes box pops up so now i know that the only things that are in front of this big square are the two buttons that i want people to press then i would come in here and make this transparent with a transparent line that way i kind of ensure that the only things that are clickable are essentially the background linking to itself and then these two yes and no buttons. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's just sort of would an there, easy. Mm -hmm. Sorry, would there be anything wrong with send, hitting the send to back? Send to back puts it way in the back. So like if your text was, it, it would then be in, behind the text. But it would then, still prevent it from moving forward or no? It depends, you could, it depends on what else is on the slide, but there's other things on the slide because if you send it all the way to the back and somebody were to click on the text, the text is above the back. So then it could advance to the next slide. Meaning like this. So like if I have this and if I send it, we're gonna, let me just actually make this gray again. So if I send this all the way to the back, let me make this smaller for a second. Just so I can do my, I'll link this to itself, which is slide, slide number three. And let's link this to, slide one and we'll link this to, I don't know, notes, right? So if I have this and it goes to slide two and I send it all the way to the back, it's now behind everything, including the text. So then if I go to present mode and if I click on escape rooms, it should take me just to the next page. Oh no, I guess it doesn't. Look at that. Nope, it works. Yeah, so you can do send it back. And that will work because it's just linking it to itself. I thought if you had clicked on the text, it wouldn't, but nope, that works. So just do send it back and then okay. it'll be behind it. Now, obviously if I click something here on the right-hand side, cause it's not being shown, but it's not being covered. These will actually go to their regular places, but yeah, just do send it back and then it'll, it'll cover everything for you.
even if you have another object on there, they could not like a like a bitmoji or anything. Like that, it won't well, so, advance the slide. So that would be the thing. Like if it's behind the bitmoji, then yes. Like if you if they were to click on the bitmoji, it then would advance to the next slide. That's where it gets a little bit tricky. If you're just dealing with text and like two objects of a yes no button, let's say right, your two choose your own adventure buttons, then you can put it in the back. But if you have a bunch of other objects on there, it's possible that they would click on the bitmoji which goes to the next slide. So that's where you- the, Does the bitmoji go to the next slide or is it just really like the background that makes it advance to the next slide? I think it's if you click on something on the slide. So let's, okay. let's, let's see, let's do this. Let's just put another, let's just put another object. And let me share. So let's go to present. So if I click on this, it's in the back. It just leads to itself. So we're good there. If I click on the text, it doesn't do anything. The text isn't linked. This is this new object I made. I didn't do any links to it. So if I click it, that goes to the next slide. So yeah, so if you had another object on there aside from text, you would have to make sure that that is behind your transparent shape. Or so, also link it to the same slide. Or like, yeah, exactly. Exactly, link it to the same slide. Um, and that's where you just, you know, you kind of play around. That's why you would, I would recommend making that box transparent at the end, like have that box kind of there where you're like, all right, I know that this is kind of my like, kind of, recycle button to keep me on the slide. So let me make sure that the only other things above it are the things that I want to be clickable. And then that could kind of, um, you know, avoid issues in the past or in the future. Cool. Nice. And then, uh, Kara, did you want to share? I saw you, I know you shared yours with me because I know you have issues sometimes with, um, I know I did just in case. I'm going to try to share. Yeah, try. Oh, is it? It's working. There Hi. it is. Okay. <laughs> oh, the little thing. So, um, Erica and I are working on um, creating a, an escape room. And what we were thinking is context clues. So, with this, um, we then made like the mission objective and um, the mad wizard and we're stuck in a dungeon, then followed by directions um, for the students. Still working as well with trying to get Erica's bitmoji onto here or creating one for her, but then going through the dungeon, um, the different items um, bringing you to, so this was the thing I wasn't familiar with the Google form, so still working on that. But um, what I did, and then realized I probably should have put it directly onto a Google form. So these would be the questions. Um, and I was trying to see if there was a way then, because then what I did is I linked the Google form to this here. And I don't know if I just created more work for the students to kind of navigate through the escape room. Um, so can you see that when I click on it? If you go into present mode, let yeah. me look at it in present mode because then you'll be able to see sort of how the audience or how your user sees it. Okay. Okay. So then say for like this one is the level two, I created a slide before realizing I probably should have done it on a Google form. Yeah. So these would be the questions. And then I linked the Google form to this page instead. Um, which then goes through the questions and what does that word mean? Whereas the page before has the sentence itself with the word and the context. So I don't know, I might have to go through and just put everything into the Google form. So it's one less step for the students, right? Cool. 
That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, it's just a matter of making sure that you have like the the what the correct answers are, and whether you set it up as a quiz or use that response validation. Right. So that's a so right. So you were talking in the beginning, and I think when I went to try to change, I think I that's why I jumped to level two because I think I delete, <clears throat> I deleted level one mm -hmm. in the midst of trying to do what you were saying. So I have to go back. So it's still a work in progress for sure. Totally. No, but it's an awesome start. And again, and I know you guys are dealing with uh, um, a very different set, right? You're dealing with the two of you are working together and you're dealing, it's speech, right? For reading? Yeah. Right. Speech. Speech. So that's a, a different content area. So you, and as working in that partnership then brings in its own challenges, like you said, like adding, you know, the bitmojis. What I would recommend you guys do for that would be if you're going to make a bunch of these things, create a folder that's shared with the two of you that's just like media or whatever. And then when, I, when either one of you gets the Bitmoji that you want to use, instead of when you click on it, like control click on it or all click on it to copy it and put it in, you can download it. Like save image, save image as. It saves it. If you're on a computer, it'll save it to your hard drive. If you're on a Chromebook, it'll let you save it to either the downloads folder or to a folder in Drive. Save it to that like media folder and call it, you know, like Kara cheering, you know, dot JPEG. So you might have just a whole collection of Bitmojis in a shared folder. So that way, either one of you, then that whole, that one shared folder might live inside of a bigger shared folder that you both work on that has okay. all of your escape rooms and all of your virtual classrooms and all of your stuff in it. So then that way you'll always have access to each other's varied um, emojis or uh, bitmojis. Okay, that's cool. Thank you. Um, Chris, this is Erica. I'm having trouble with uh, starting my video for some reason. No problem. It's a, a, uh, um, I, I don't know, it's occupied by other apps. So um, I will present the Choose Your Own Adventure. Cool we created. Um, okay, hang on. I'm also. Okay, tell me if you can see it. It's loading up. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so then I go into present mode, right? Yep. Okay, so this was, um, we we're thinking of creating little choose your own adventures for different articulation sounds that we're working on with our kids. So this is an interactive K story for students that have trouble making the K sound and often produce it as a T in the front of their mouth. So this is Kai's baking adventure. Um, so meet Kai, he's seven years old. He gets to play a sport for his school, help Kai choose which sport. Should he play hockey or soccer? And then whichever one they choose on, they have to say a certain word five times. Um, so here, let's pick hockey. He's excited to play. He has his first team meeting. He wants to bake some treats for everyone. Should he bake cookies or cake? Let's see. He's going to bake cake. Um, so he heads to the kitchen and mixes all of his ingredients together in a big bowl. He places the mixture into a baking dish and puts it into the oven to bake. Kai's mother told him he should never leave the kitchen unattended when he is cooking something while Kai is waiting patiently uh, for, that should say for, <laughs> the baking to finish. He hears his cat meowing. Kai wonders what his cat needs. Should Kai go check on the cat or wait in the kitchen for the baking to be done? So let's, and you're going to say cat five times. Let's say he clicks on the cat. It goes into, you know, he decides to check on the cat. It turns out it wasn't an emergency. She just wanted some food. Kai gets the cat food from the cabinet in the garage and fills her bowl. And I tried to load the stories with a lot of K's and G words in general so that, you know, if the kid is a reader and they're reading this out loud, they could record themselves potentially, and they're also getting a lot of speech practice that way. Okay, so Kai is about to head back to the kitchen when he smells something burning. Oh no, that smells like smoke. Kai runs back to the kitchen to see that he burnt his dessert. Now he must start all over. Um, and then if, you know, you click on here, it takes you to the beginning. Um, and if you clicked on the kitchen, uh, it obviously went to something else. So, That's awesome. Yeah, just a fun thing and we could do this for multiple sounds um hopefully the kids will have fun with it no that's great that's like what you're saying with adam earlier about you know which if you're doing this a lot and you can 
copy and paste or not copy, but duplicate, you know, make a copy of the file to then just change sounds. You don't necessarily have to reinvent the wheel and, and kind of remake the entire thing. You just have to be careful about when you do it, making sure and reviewing your links and making sure if the links for, you know, one set of sounds goes to a particular set of documents, that if you duplicate that choose your own adventure with links, that they make sure that you update those links to go to the, the other resources. But then as you build these, and if you like these and you're going to use them, it helps you to save time because then you're not always starting with a blank presentation. You're always starting at least with a framework and a foundation of images, text, a flow. And then also it's good for the kids too, because the kids are like, oh, right, I know how to use this. And they get comfortable and more familiar with knowing how to navigate that type of file or that type of activity. That's awesome. Thank you. Is my video working now? No. Oh, it's still not working. Okay. Uh, what uh, what kind of device are you on? I'm on a Mac. So usually I was on a, a Meet this morning and it wasn't an issue, but for some reason. Sometimes that can happen if you have like a photo booth open or FaceTime open or oh, another okay. another program on the computer that uses the camera because okay. then that's why you get that error message that says the camera's otherwise occupied or whatever it is. Okay, I'll um, try to close everything and I'll see if that works. Cool. Awesome, anyone else wanna share? All right, go ahead. Um, wait, I just lost. I can go. All right, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I had, has anyone used the, uh, hot corners where like the windows, you can make the windows move around. Yeah, so I do that and I just lost everyone and I went to the desktop, but I'm, I'm back. So sorry, so yeah, go ahead. Um, so let me just share my screen. Can you see my screen right now? It's yep. Here on my end. Nope, we're good. So, um, I make a little slightly different Jujong adventure. It's kind of like a right or wrong adventure for the students, for like the level one students. I ask them to kind of like look at like a character in Chinese and then try to choose what that means according to the shape of that character. For example, if like this one, what does it mean if you choose like heart? then it brings you to your try again, then you go back to that page and you choose the right answer, then it like then we are gonna like debrief a little bit, like why does it like mean this character? It's like a sun and it comes from here to here to here. So it's basically everything's pretty much the same. So this is the second one. If you choose the wrong one, try again. If you choose the right one, then we could talk a little bit about how it comes from. So I have it for like a lot of the characters. So that's the uh, choose your own adventure. And nice. then the second one, the escape room, I didn't have time to do um, all of the characters part. So I guess like I would just present and then we just like use the tiger language in the classroom to just like give them the instruction. Um, and then if they click this, they will go to the first part, the first puzzle, which is the vocabulary. So they have to, type the words in Chinese. So if they have a wrong answer, then it's not gonna work. So they have to try it again. Um, like this. So then it will bring some to the second one. So this is kind of like a review practice for them. Um, so if you just keep going, I have made like 10 questions here. And then if you go to the last question, which is this one, um, and then if you do it, you submit, then you get the code. Okay. Let me see. I get it right. Okay, then you get a call, which is three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So you copy it, then you go back to the room and then you go to the second one. Then you put the code here, then you can continue. But I have a little bit problem here for this part because the second part for the review section, review station, it's like sentences. So I gave them sentences in English. They have to type them in Chinese. But the problem is like for, for example, for some of the questions when they type, there are multiple answers. So if there are multiple answers, then I don't know how to set it like the first one that like you answer this one correctly, then you move on because you have multiple answers and they're all correct. You know what I mean? So yeah. then 
like I, I couldn't figure out this part. So I just like kind of like made this into a quiz. So they just like whatever answer everything, they could do it right, do it wrong, but they have to answer the questions because all of them are like required. So just keep going and then they submit then they could see the accuracy so they could see the correct answers over there so i just made it into this type so first for example this one who's your mom so you could do this you could also do that so i just don't know how to make this into like the first one that you have like a right or wrong that if you uh, answer correctly you move forward if not then you have to just like keep you going. could do a multiple choice right, where there are three, maybe there are three options and choose the one that doesn't mean who is your mother, mm -hmm. right? And then they would have to be able to identify, yes, these two mean who is your mother and this one mm -hmm. doesn't. That might be one way. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah, the um, only other thing I would then say, and that's, and that's the easiest way to automate it because otherwise what you would have to do is you would have to when it's done check the res the results and then manually hand out the code or whatever it is to like that's where you would have to like not make it a quiz or whatever just make it like a where submit. they they submit and then you would look at the results and you would then sort of grade it by it just hand, so to speak. point right like right. you want it to be a easy kind of yeah but that might be one way or you know like chris was showing like um you could have like a a word bank like we were you know in the you remember chris you were just showing us yep. like in the, the picture yeah the, the either with the description or a picture as part of the question mm -hmm. right and like you know um choose from these three options and maybe mm -hmm. only one of the options here means who is your mother okay got that it. might be another way it depends on like you know again like what your goal is but that might be another way to do it okay thank you yeah and that again goes back to that whole like you kind of got to play around with it and the first one you do which maybe even one like uh, use the ones you guys have all created now like september 1st whatever that day is, see how it goes and be honest with the kids and be like, I'm going to give this a shot. Like we're going to take one period, let's say, or it's at the end of one, you know, we have a lot of truncated weeks in the beginning part of the school year where we don't, I don't think we have a full week of school until like September 20th. So you might be able to use some of that fragmentation to your advantage say, hey, listen, like, I know it's weird. We have like Wednesday and Thursday off, like whatever. Hey, let's try this thing that I made over the summer. Let's see how it functions. And then that's how you could see, like, do your questions make sense to them? You know, is giving them the three right answers and one wrong answer, like the way to go? Like, does that work for how you're wanting to teach them? Does that, you know, does your description help? You know, does adding a word bank image, does it help or hurt? Like, almost use the first one and be honest with the kids and just say, listen, you're going to help me test this. Like, let's see how this goes. Tell me like where you were confused or what didn't work. And it's almost like a, it's a throwaway in the sense of you're not really focusing on the content of it so much. You're trying to get feedback from your user, from the person who will do it more frequently yeah. And then that way you can then refine it and fine tune it and really decide, is this going to work for that particular lesson or unit? And then also too, by the time it's like time to do like a real one, like at the end of a unit, the kids will be even more psyched because they'll remember kind of what it was and they'll be like, oh yeah, we helped you with that. And then it gives them a little bit more buy-in and then you can even, you know, you're, you're helping to sort of shape it based on how they and a lot of them are super tech savvy, like <laughs> even in fifth grade, right? They're like, oh, Mrs. Robert, you know, you could, it would have been so, my, I'm thinking of Michael Hayes, Chris, like he would have been like, oh, no, 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 this, here's the much easier way, right. <laughs> way to do this. Like, he, you know, a lot of them just are so good at this. Yeah. And it could even be the type of thing, like for you upper grade, you know, your secondary teachers, where if you let them be a bit of a, a test case for you in terms of do the questions really demonstrate their learning? Do they really understand the questions? Like, how are they engaging with this? They may 
if they say, hey, this is really cool, you could almost flip it on its head and say, all right, I'll show you how I made it. Now I want you to make one. You know, maybe the kids make super simple ones as a way to like, you prove to me what you've learned. I want you, you know, you divide the class in half. And it's like, like Adam with your thing of saying, you know, like a certain, you know, early man, like first half the class gets like the first couple of, you know, eras. The other half of the class gets like the second half and they have to make quizzes for each other or something like that. You know, you can almost try to leverage it in that way. If, you know, with, because you've been getting feedback from the kids and sort of seeing how they like it, that could be another way to use this in your classroom when you let them kind of create them as study materials, you know, student created resources, um, which you then can theoretically use year to year or semester to semester if you change up, you know, students. Cool. Because I realized we did that, we started doing that this year in fourth grade with um, something different, but it was uh, the American Revolution unit we realized that our students had all independently kind of created this like really good research notebook out of Google Slides. We said, you know what? You're gonna curate that, make that a little bit cleaner and more simple, refine it. And we're actually gonna do them as a separate slideshow on a website, on a fourth grade website that's gonna become a resource for next year's fourth graders for when they're doing it. It's not gonna be the answers, but it's gonna be like, hey, I found really good information about the Boston Tea Party on these three websites, you know, or I, this is a picture of our like, you know, inspiration board for our project, just to then kind of help. So it's like the kids are then creating the content to kind of help. And then it also gave us feedback in terms of like during COVID and kind of being separate, how the kids interacted with the tech and the tactile with each other. We let them kind of create the resource for the next year. And it's all like, and it's, you know, it might be a fun way to assess their learning. Like now you make a, like choose your own adventure, you know, for a project. And, and I did have uh, students do that in fifth grade, um, you know, a true or false. And I can show you guys one uh, if we have time at the end after everybody's shared, but like, you know, for at least certainly uh, for fifth graders, like once you involve some tech in it and you let them kind of, all right, so now you're gonna teach us about your, whatever it is, like whether it's a biography or whatever, like having them make it certainly allows them to demonstrate their learning. Um, and, uh, you know, once they've seen you make one, it just gives them a little impetus for, for their own creation, which is an option certainly. So who's left? I think a couple people. Who's that? Oh, Vivian, you're not raising your hand. No, no, no. I can, Sorry. I can go. I'm, I'm, it's left to go. Yep, go ahead. All right. Um, I'll share my choose your own adventure first. So I made a drawing game or drawing prompt. Um, for art class. So this is choose your own art adventure. So first they can pick between their materials. And let's say they pick colored pencils, fill your paper with organic shapes or geometric shapes, color them in with black and white patterns or colorful marks. Um, and then add finishing touches. So there's a bunch of different iterations. And um, each slide has, um, you know, inspiration for either describing what I'm asking you to do, um, or just ideas of what you could add. So I thought that would be fun for like a free draw day or um, just if they're, they finish a project, fast finishers, something like that. Um, and then my escape room. So I wrote a little blurb about getting locked in the art classroom um, because I was staying late, getting carried away with lesson planning, which does happen. Um, and then if you click on this lock, um, it asks you to start with the code. 
what is the Japanese word for folding paper or origami? And then in busy cities with lots of construction, you'll see me there causing traffic disruptions. I lift heavy objects from the ground, defying gravity, suspending hundreds of pounds. What am I? Does anyone want to guess? Wait, where is it showing that? I'm sorry. Is it not showing no, it? The question is not showing the two emojis, the help. Oh, um, is it not showing the lock? Are there, are, there are three locks on the bulletin board. Is that right? Oh, okay. So I had moved on to the form, um, so I can oh. bring. I can. Oh, because you were just sharing that one tab. Got it. So here you go. I mean, I won't torture you guys. <laughs> I can just tell you what it is. A crane. Uh, yeah. So origami crane, nice job. Nice. Um, <laughs> and then it prompts you with a video of how to fold a paper crane. And my idea was that in your table groups, you would work together to try to follow the video and make an origami crane and then actually give it to me. Um, and then I would give you the next code. That um, is so creative. Thank you. I was going like really into figuring out if I could have, um, do you know what a teachable machine is? It's like if you hold up, Google has an application where if you like hold up something, it can read what it is. So if you drew like a stick figure, it would recognize it as a stick figure, yeah. but it was taking way too much time. <laughs> so I just thought this would be a, a good way to have them create something physical and I could just look at it in the moment and it wouldn't be super complicated for me to assess whether or not they you know, got close to the crane. Um, and that's right, cool because so then they could even go home and go back. Like if you have this linked on your web, you know, your teacher page or website, whatever it is, they can then kind of go back, do that lock again, show their folks. And then it kind of allows them to kind of keep having that video, especially as a resource. Um, thank you. Um, and then I have one more lock. Should I share that one too? Yeah. So I would have given them that code and then unscramble the following this group. Oh, so I guess I made a mistake there. That error message probably says yeah. group. I'll fix that. Um, and then fill in the blank of a blank is a representation of an artist that is drawn, painted, photographed, or sculpted. That's a self portrait. And then it asks them create a answer to question one and answer to question two and hand into Miss Carrie. So a group self portrait. So the idea would be that they work together and draw something and then they take a picture of it and upload it to the form or they just show me in person. That's awesome. And what uh, what devices are the kids using? For these, they all have Chromebooks, nice. um, so they could use that. And they use the um, camera on the Chromebook, and that's an yeah. easy upload. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. And that's it. Thank you. And then I think what is it? Rachel and Shelby, your left. Kimberly, I think you're left. Yeah, go ahead, Kim. Kimberly, sorry. I can go next. Or whomever. Um, so I honestly was not very interested in the choose your own adventure. Um, when I was looking at it and thinking of it with math, it just seemed like I would either need to do true and false or like yes, or like right or wrong answers. Mm -hmm. And that the wrong answer would just link them back to the right answer. So instead of doing that, I just did more locks on my escape room. Um, the challenging part I had and things are covered, um, was trying to figure out like what kind of questions to ask so that I didn't do multiple choice, but that there was just that one exact answer. So I kind of made like the answer key that we were supposed to make, but then at the bottom, I tried to kind of come up with my questions and like the notes I wanted to give the students to make sure that like they had the word written exactly how it needed to be written. Yeah. Or like this question that has like list all the number sets, like giving them like 
use the abbreviation, use capitals, no commas, which maybe made it more complicated than just making it a multiple choice. Um, so in the future that probably, I just need to go multiple choice and get over it. Or yeah. I saw like, um, it just made me think like, this might be great for um, like, I'm just thinking for a second, like in geometry, right? Always, sometimes, never. And the answer is just always, sometimes, or never, right? Like polygons have straight lines, right? Always, sometimes, never. Like that might be another way to kind of. Yeah, definitely. And like I did this for unit one. So like each lock is a different like part of it. So like when I did the numerical values, it was so much easier. Cause it was just like, don't write yeah. the word, just put the number. And that made it so much easier. I did wonder um, if there was a way to get math type on the Google form. Cause like when I did my questions, I ended up using um, pictures and images. I'll just kind of show it from this angle, but I didn't know if there was a way for the kids to be able to type in like exponents and things like that. Like this is an image, but I didn't want them to have to upload an image. I didn't know if there was like an add on or anything with Google Forms so that the kids could type exponents. Yeah, it's um, it's not even an add-on. It's just um, it's like key combinations. Um, Those shortcuts. Yeah. Uh, there are certain and, fonts that that work better for math. Like Pangolin is like one of the fonts that for like math. Mm -hmm. Or like um, I'm just remembering Marina with the Spanish um, had the couple in the top that they could copy and paste so that maybe would be a yeah. route with some of my like with like the square root or with the multiplication symbol so yeah and some of these and i'll toss a link into the chat right now so some of these are just like in it um if you're in slides or, or like docs it's easy because it's just about like rearranging and, and kind of inserting the uh, or formatting the number to have subscripts and superscripts and stuff like that. But then there are keyboard combinations for doing it, like control plus or a control slash, I think is what it is, gives you like text formatting. Um, I've never tried doing it into a Google form, but I would imagine you can just because it's. Um, yeah, as long as you're doing this, it's I use the same thing they use. Yeah. Right, it's text, so like it should be fine. Um, let me okay. just see if I do. I'll have to look up that to see if there's like a list of common ones, and I could just add it in as like an image. Yeah, uh, yeah. how you were showing before. Um, and then I spent more time on the locks, so I have like four locks, but then I did create a little um, story that says how they broke into the school to steal my candy, and now they're like kind of locked in the classroom. And then once we're in here, so it's just a classroom and there's four things, which I didn't realize my slide, this slide is my last slide. So I didn't even realize that you would need to put the transparent background over it to block them from going forward. Cause since this was my last one, I wasn't- It's not gonna go anywhere, yeah. Yeah, but I did like the idea um, that Marina had of like, cause the last code kind of seemed very anticlimactic. It was just like, hey, you got out of it or, whatever so i did like her um trick of having that secret box so this is just one of my locks um and actually i should probably start with lock one which is the door so all fractions are rational numbers true if you type the wrong answer it says try again Um, and then this was one of the ones where I had to do like weird things where they had to use abbreviations and letters in certain order up here. They have like the notes. Oh, and then it says you have unlocked lock one, please submit for code for lock two. Um, I was wondering, I forget who shared it before, and they had the question, if they got it wrong, like link back for the multiple choice. Does that only an option when you do multiple choice? Is that 
or is that an option anytime you do, or does it have to be a quiz to be an option? Say that again, when you have. So I think it was um, maybe Devin when he had yeah. his multiple choice so, questions. You know, I didn't play around with the form enough to know if there were other options, but it was definitely a multiple choice. Um, and then when you add, uh, when, you, when you click on the three dots on the bottom right hand corner, um, it, it gives you the choice in each question to send it to it with the answer of that question to send it to another section or not. And so all the incorrect ones, it sent it right back to the same section. So like, as Chris had said, every section for me was a different question. Um, okay. Then, so it was probably just the multiple choice then. Cause when I, I, I think, so. at... yeah, okay. I think again, I didn't, I didn't dig around much after that, but. But you didn't make it a quiz or anything. It was just a Google form multiple choice. Okay, because I like Correct. that. Google yeah. form multiple choice. Yeah, for yeah, the most part. And there was like that. a couple questions at the end. I try to set my questions up at the end that were a specific answer. Because um, that's where you would do like if you answer a question, if you answer B, it goes to the next section. If you answer A, it stays, it loops it back almost like that transparent box concept mm -hmm. where the wrong answer is just linked back to itself. And the one right answer goes forward. Yeah, so that's all I have. I just have the escape room with the four different locks. And then at the end, um, they reach freedom. But I think I want to add in like a freedom slide of them exiting with the candy or something. Nice. That's awesome. Very cool. I think we got what Kim and Shelby left. So Kim, you want to go? Yeah, sure. Um, I did my I did my escape room a little bit different only because I'm do, I'm lower elementary special ed. So I was doing it based off like what I know, like for my previous kids and how like switching between tabs was a lot for them. Um, but I do want to modify another one where I am doing the Google slides and they're clicking through and making the different forms. Um, but for this one, I did the different sections where it's a place value review. Um, I wanted to do it like through a haunted mansion, like give them like, a little background in the beginning. Um, and each task is for like the place value, like this writing standard form into word form. And then they would get like a word letter clue to build a four letter word that has to do with like a haunted house Halloween theme um for each one it'll eventually spend spell at wand and then they need to do that spelling to get to i guess the congratulations um then doing standard form if they get it wrong it'll just say like oops try again until they get it right um so that's what i did for that one and i'm hoping i can break each section into a larger section for the gen ed classroom that the teacher can use for that and then for my pick your own adventure, I had more fun doing this one, but I was like having a issue linking one of them because I was going through every single possibility and option, like if they were to choose one and there was one where it was like linking back to a slide I didn't want it to do. Um, so I was doing a shopping theme because of the big tasks that they do in second grade is money so they're helping me find ingredients to make a dinner. We're going to do pizza. Um, so they have actual money up here. They have to count which one can they can she buy. Um, I did two options where you could buy both. One says I could buy this one, but how much change is left over? Um, if they choose the wrong one, oops, try again. And it links back to that. Um, then the cheese, which one, if they get it right, it goes to the sauce. And then in the end, it'll say, congrats, you helped me make dinner. <laughs> so that was mine. That's awesome. I don't know if like maybe on the side you can help me. It was like weird. I like didn't know how to fix that issue with like the linking, if they get it incorrect and then bouncing back. Complicating <laughs> slides and it was like, I don't know. And then it would have affected the other slides and it was just so frustrating. <laughs> Oh, was it the wrong number in the group? I I don't know. It was one where 
if I did end up getting all of them correct, it was linking back to a different slide because I kind of duplicated. It was weird. But I don't want to take everyone else's time, so. No, that's, I well, that's, and I think it was, I apologize about my dog. Um, sometimes that just happens when we have those metal objects. Um, I don't know why it's, no, I didn't want to feedback for some reason on yours, um, Kimberly. But I think sometimes with those, and we could take, um, if you want to share that file with me, I could kind of take a look at it. Sometimes what happens is when you're messing around with um, these types of things, when you're building tons of links on things, sometimes I've done this where like I accidentally copy and paste like the wrong box and then I paste it in too many of the wrong places and then the links like get sort of thrown off. But if you want, like just share that separately with uh, me and I'll take a look at it because it might just be that there's a random extra piece in there somewhere because i've had that happen where like i with the whole like front and back stuff where like I, I don't i have the wrong thing in the wrong spot and sometimes it's as simple as that um for things like that so but yeah so share them and i'll take a look at that um but i dig it we'll get that problem solved and like i said apologize about the dog somebody rang the doorbell and god forbid anyone comes to my house and rings the doorbell the dog goes bananas uh shelby okay um let's see here uh share desktop okay did i do it right do you yep. see okay so i have a unit on for fourth grade with costa rica <clears throat> And this past year, I did a different approach where I pretended like I won the lotto and then, you know, money is no object. I'm taking you all to Costa Rica. And so the unit basically covers like the geography and it covers some, a lot of culture, food, things like that. And then the real focus is on actually the Costa Rica um, rainforest animals and Costa Rica fruits. But it doesn't have to be. So this this year, I'm going to do it similar to last year's upcoming year. So this is my choose your own adventure. So I'm going to do the same thing where when you kick back to that. All right. After dinner, Sarah Marchese asks you or tells you that you have to make another decision. Tomorrow morning, there's two choices for your excursion. You, some students are going to a soccer game and others are going shopping. Which do you choose? So you choose which one you're going and so on and so forth. So this one will tell you it's the next day and you're going and it tells you what team won. So my whole idea is um, they take this journey. That's where it ended because I'm not quite done. All right, so that's be if they went shopping. So anyway, so they take this journey and then I think for their project at the end of the unit, I'm gonna have them present and they're gonna say, I went to, they're all gonna be, they're all gonna have gone to Costa Rica, but they're journeys are going to have taken different directions. So they're going to tell us what some activities are that they did, what was a dish that they tried, um, did they like it or did they not like it? I'm gonna, I was going to add that one in. Um, and then that's kind of it. So that's my choose your own adventure. Very cute. And they can obviously like go more than once and like learn more things and, you know, yeah. it, it does, it's not, it doesn't have to be like a one and done kind of thing where it's, a, you know, they could go back and have another adventure, which is right, cool. right. If they want to go and check out what the other hotel is about, then they could do that. Or if they wanted to explore first, um, there's going to be a different, yeah, exactly. Different journeys throughout the adventure. Um, and then my escape room, I didn't really completely finish. I, oops, that is not it. Um, Oh, Marquis a digital escape room. So I have a similar story kind of as a Marina and a, somebody else. So mine is I have bad news. There's been a terrible mistake. I've been kidnapped and transferred to another school. You're the only ones that can help me get back. You must solve the puzzles, figure out where I am and inform Principal Hill of this awful mistake. If you're unable to do so, the change will be permanent and you will have a substitute teacher. So your name is Mrs. Grouchy Pants. So she or she's <laughs> mean and da da da. So please help. So my, um, I only have two puzzles done so far. And the first one is um, an about me. So if they click on the Ola, it should link them to my, nope. Okay, that's the link to the puzzle. Okay, so they click on me, I guess. Nope. One of them links to my teacher page. Um, I don't know now. And so it, it goes to my teacher page and there's three facts about me that they have to 
fill, fill out in the, um, how many full school years has Sir Marquise taught at Green Acres? Um, what country did I learn Spanish? And how many children does Sir Marquise have? And then I did the code, but I, I wasn't, I'm still playing with this, but the co code was gonna be the country, they're trying to figure out where I am. So the first one is gonna be the country I'm in. So I'm in the USA. And then if they solve the next one, which is um, if they click on the flag, it brings them to Spanish speaking countries, the world video. Um, so they actually have to watch it. And then they'll get the answer that there are 21 Spanish speaking countries in the world. And then somewhere in here is the Google form. And then that's where they're gonna get the location, the state I'm in. And I put Kentucky randomly. And then the next one was gonna be the city, which I was gonna make up. And then the next one was gonna be the um, name of the school. So still a work in progress. That's great though. Thank you. Is that everybody, I think? Yes, I think everybody's had a turn. Nice. Awesome. So what we'll do is real quick before we um, talk about one last little thing, the little maze sort of thing that Vivian had touched on last week is um, we'll talk about a little housekeeping about your projects. So at the beginning of this, you guys had made a folder for this course. That folder is essentially your project for this class. So what we're going to do is you're going to end up turning in, turning in that folder with all of your stuff in it. Now, you may want to move stuff around. You may want to put stuff in your own organization. No problem. There's two things that you can do with that. So if you have stuff in this folder that you need to keep it in this folder because you worked on it, but you want to bring it out and put it in your own sort of organization, there's two choices are you can make a copy of the thing and move it so that whatever's in this folder is finished and it's done and that's fine. And then you can sort of reorganize it. Or there's the little, um, the Google trick, the Google Drive trick of Shift Z. And what, if you click on something and then do Shift Z, what that'll do is allow you to add a shortcut, meaning that you can add a shortcut somewhere else. So I'll show you what that looks like in a second. So like, if I worked on this and I wanted to live somewhere else and I wanted to organize it so I had still worked on the same file and I didn't make a copy, I wanted just one file, whatever, but I wanted to live in two places, I click on the file, like this virtual classroom. And if I hold down shift and press Z, I then get this box that pops up. And it doesn't say move, it says add shortcut. So if I wanted this file to also be accessible somewhere else, I can just navigate to, you know, my, let's say last year's teaching folder in fourth grade, I can add a shortcut here. So what that means is this file would live in these two places. It would live in this course folder, but it would also live in your, whatever, your curriculum folder, your lesson plan folder, wherever you want it to be. So that, that's one way to do it. The other option is if you just were like, oh, I, I like this, but I want to keep working on it separate and I want this to live alone. All you do is you click on the file and then you can, you know, use the three dots, you can control click, all click, and you can make a copy and then move that copy to that other place. But basically what you're going to do is with this folder, so this 5602 folder, this is going to be your, um, your file, your, your project. What you're going to do is you're going to get the link to it. And then once you have this link, you're going to notice this says it's restricted, only a couple of people. So I'm going to copy that link first, and then I'll show you on the document. I'm going to give you guys access, which I just did, to this file. This file is on the blog, and it's the project file. So essentially, you're going to make sure that the four of us Myself, Vivian, Anne-Marie, and Fran are on that view portion of the file. So like when we come back over here, oops, to drive, when I'm here, where it says like restricted, you're going to share it with me, Vivian, Fran, and marie And you can do that before or after you copy the link. Then you'll just put your name in the first column. You'll put that, you just 
paste that link in and then just that's the wrong link but just paste the link in and then press the space bar and to make it into a link then the notes is just a brief explanation a couple of sentences like i did all the stuff but i really vibed with you know the virtual classroom so that one i worked more on or you know i like them all i kind of put the same number of effort into each i think i might use each one i'm not sure just kind of a brief explanation of what's in that folder like we know what it's done but just kind of a little feedback for us about like which is the kind of the thing that you connected with most what was the thing you sort of put the biggest effort into and it's fine if all the things in there are in pieces that's okay part of this was for you guys to experience these platforms in these ways right like everyone's made a google slideshow before but they haven't necessarily made a virtual classroom or an escape room people most likely have made a form at some point but not necessarily a form in this way with validation and sections and all that stuff so it could just be it's it's okay that they're that's fine like that was part of this process so that's where the notes are where it's just a little explanation of kind of what you have in there what you kind of put your focus on and I, if a couple of you are sharing, awesome. So you'll put the link in and say, hey, I worked with so-and-so because we're colleagues and we're trying to build a library of resources, whatever it is. Does that make sense to everyone in terms of how to turn in the folder as the project? Can you just tell me again how to get to the that page, the blog? I mean, I, I know how to get to the blog, but the new... Yeah, so on, the, so on the blog, and let me make sure. So if you go to the blog, it sh for this class, there should be, there's a link to the participant projects. And if you click on it, it's right under the agenda okay. above resources. If you click on participant projects, now that I've shared it with you, it'll open up. If you had clicked right. on that beforehand, it would not have opened up. Okay, thanks. And yeah, so just pick a row, put your name in, put a link to that folder. And then like we said, just a brief sort of explanation of what's in there, kind of what you connected with, what what you vibed with, what, and it's fine. If you're like, dude, I did the vir virtual escape room and no, not happening. I made it, did, what's that? Yeah, I'm sorry, I was just gonna say like, a lot of this stuff is a work in progress. You find that you go back and either you're refining or like, I'm gonna make a copy of this and turn it into something else. So like, you know, what? as long as you've made some attempt at creating um, some of these, you know, you're fine because it's it's learning. It takes a, a while. Like I'm always texting Chris. I'm trying this. Help me understand. You know, like how to make it better or what would a good alternative be or something. And a lot of times, I know that I'm the tech guy, but a lot of times I'll just tell people no. Like sometimes the easiest solution is not to do it. So <laughs> do you know. What I mean? But like, it's one of those things where if you're like, well, I don't really get the escape room. It's like, well, then it might not work for your right. content area and your kids. And that's fine. And then that's part of the process is like you going through trying to build this going, yeah, I can't, don't try to shoehorn something in. But and at least if you've done a couple of questions and you're like, yeah, this is really not going to work for my kids. That's part of the process. And that's fine. And that said, you know, like we had fun, like playing and building and making our own things. But lots of times someone else has already made what you're looking for. Don't be like, yes, maybe, you know, you want to build something yourself because you've got an idea and like you want to run with it and that's fine. But sometimes like you're desperate for something, go look for it. Somebody has already made it um, and, you know, possibly made it better because <laughs> um, I've done that sometimes in is it okay, Chris, if I share screen for just a second? Yeah. Um, you know, like I told you last week, or like I mentioned last week, uh, Slides Mania like has lots of great slides. Like for, you know, it, last September when it, like elementary school, you know, we had like these kind of five minute days where we were only with our kids for half an hour on the first day and an hour on the second day, like, you know, and I was looking for ways to kind of have different icebreakers with them and whatever. This true or false game had already been made and I just went in and 
like changed it to to fit for me and we played this game on the first day of school right like and it's just a true or false right um so quickly right like pick a number so eight is it true or false that mrs robert would choose a vacation in the mountains over a vacation at the beach right so true. No, it's not true. I would never <laughs> choose the mountains over the beach. So, right. And then like the arrow back, but like, like all I had to do here was, um, all I had to do was look for something and it was easy and it was there. So yeah, sometimes definitely make your own, but sometimes it's already out there. So you know, uh, we also did like a, a emoji bubble pop, like a get to know you. And this was out there and the kids each chose, you know, it was like an icebreaker. They chose a, uh, they chose an emoji. And then if you could meet any famous person, who would it be, right? So like, it, this was so much work for somebody to make, I am sure, right? But it was out there and so, I like, yep, I like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that. So, and hopefully, yeah. just through this course, you you now when you see these things, you'll right, understand, you understand how, they, how they were built and how they function and how you can edit them to customize them for yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, do we want to talk about like how to go into Frontline and do all Vivian? that? Oh yeah. Sorry, what was the name of that site you were saying with the slides? Oh, uh, so there are several. There's Slides Mania. Slides Mania, okay. And then there's also Slides Go is another. Slides Carnival is another. You know, there it, there's so much out there. There really is. And YouTube things, right? Like when I wanted to learn to make my virtual classroom and um, and the escape room, like I just went to YouTube and how to make and I watched videos and I called Chris and, you know, I just pieced it together. Don't be afraid, like it's messy and, you know, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but you just have to, you just have to go. Yeah, and like we said, as you've been digging and as you dig through these, now that you have an understanding of the sort of the structure behind these and how to link things or whatnot. If you find an already created one, it might just be literally a matter of just changing text. Right. You know, where you, all the images and links are done and you're literally just going in there and just editing the words. You know, I mean, that can save time and there'll be plenty of times where you can grab quick ones like that and do that. And then that will make those times where you have to create your own that much yeah. faster. Cause you'll be like, oh yeah, I, I completely in my mind, I know the structure and I know the flow. And it sort of helps make these a lot more accessible, whether you're tweaking somebody else's or creating your own. And sometimes it just gives you an idea for another one that you that you decide you want to make on your own, you know? So yeah, definitely uh, you can be inspired by some of the stuff you find. Any questions about the content, the technical aspects, things of that nature? Everyone's good. Cool. So then, yeah, I mean, it'll be just a matter of um, going into Frontline and doing the uh, survey. At the end, we'll mark the attendance complete. I think we have access to that. One of us has access to do the attendance because then once we mark the attendance, then you guys will be able to. Um, attendance. I think I'm, you think I'm attendance. Uh, and then what we'll do is then once everyone has those links in there and the document, we'll let um, Fran know and she'll do her buttons that will then let you mark it complete after you've done the survey. Cool. Well, if everyone's good and there's nothing else, Vivian, I think we're Yay. right on time. Great right. job, everybody. Yeah. Um, and uh, please like if you think of anything that you like you're interested in that you like have seen or want to like there is some other stuff like there were mazes that 
we just ran out of time to share, but like, you know, anything you think of, like it could always be another iteration of, like we could always do this again with another, just more fun stuff. Cool. All right. And yeah, reach out anytime, follow up. Feel free to ask Vivian all sorts of questions. She likes to respond to emails frequently. Love it. Love it. No, well, enjoy. We only have a short time left, right? Um, before school starts. But um, this yeah. is fun stuff. So, um, yeah, I made a digital uh, planner for myself. Like, there, you'll go on these sites and you'll see there's so much stuff there. You're going to get so many ideas for September. And those are all um, in on the blog in that um, slideshow that resources. Those are referenced in there. Um, I'm pretty sure, Vivian, I'm just checking it right now. Did Yeah, I don't know if I dropped the digital planner in there, but. Oh, no, what I'll do is I'll add them to the Slides Mania, Slides Carnival, and Slides oh, Go. Yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I'll add those it's in there. Free. It's all free. Yeah, um, I'll just add links to those in there, so that way everyone will have that. Um, and then that's about it. Yay. Everyone good? All right. All right, everybody. See you later. Thank, yep. you. Thank you. Awesome class. Yeah. Bye, guys. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank